Good evening everybody and welcome to HeroCraft. My name is Arl and I'll be your herald guiding you through the basics of our wonderful server. If you have not yet watched the Welcome to Hero Landing video, I highly recommend it as it'll greatly help you choose which server you want to spend your first few days on. So let's get started. If you're a new player, I highly recommend the PvE server simply because there's no one that's going to be jumping you while you're trying to level up your classes. In addition, you receive the exact same loot and EXP from the PvE server, making it an all-around safer choice. Once you get the hang of the game though, I do highly recommend you go back to the PvP server and maintain your stay there. It's a lot more fun, and that's where the real entertainment of HeroCraft is. Now by now you should notice that there are a few more GUI elements in HeroCraft than other Minecraft servers, most specifically the one in the top middle and the right middle. The top middle is the Hero HUD, and that shows your health, your two classes, and what level you are. And the side middle is the Hero Sidebar. This can show things like your cooldown bars and the status of the health of your party members. Since it's your first few days, you probably aren't going to be spending that much time with other players at the moment, in which case I like to type slash Hero Sidebar None to disable the sidebar. However, if you do have a few friends that are all joining at the same time, you can type slash Party space invite, space their name, to form a party with them. While you're in a party with another player, you can help them with beneficial spells and you cannot hurt them with any ship or form. The next few hours will be pretty similar to any other Minecraft server you're going to play. Simply make your way out of the spawn, following the signs is the best way to do this, and find a small place to live. From there you're just going to do the classic punch the tree to get the wood, get the wood to build a cabin like you do in any other Minecraft server, and establish a small residence. But enough of the boring regular things you'll do in any server, let's get on to the fun part, leveling classes. But like anything in life, before you learn how to run, you have to learn about classes. Everybody in the game has two classes, a combat class and a crafting profession. And they're exactly what they sound like. Combat class is used for combat, killing things, while crafting profession is used to build stuff. Now the hero hut at the top of your screen has a lot of useful information regarding your current class. It shows what class you are, what level you are, and how much XP you currently have in progression to the next level. Each class levels in drastically different ways, but we'll start with the fun one, the combat class. Now combat class levels by killing mobs. That's it, it's the only way to do it. Go out into the wild, find a zombie, kill the zombie, gain XP. Now there's nothing from stopping you from running around a random forest, killing off creepers and skellies, but the best way to level is to find a flat open swamp like this one and go to town. These flat terraform swamps are a haven for mobs and they often spawn in large quantities. In addition, you'll get slimes, and slimes produce an extremely large amount of EXP. If you first log into the game, you're going to be stuck as a lost soul. This is your basic level 1 starting combat class. And your first thought might be, alright, just go make a sword, crank some iron armor, and go out and kill some mobs. Unfortunately, that actually won't work. For starters, Lost Souls can't wear iron armor. To make things doubly difficult, you actually can't craft iron armor unless you're a smith, which, since you're just logging into the game, you're only a crafter. So how do people do it? Well, it's simple. You're gonna actually want to make a hoe. Why a hoe? Because in HeroCraft, certain tools and items that aren't normally vanilla Minecraft weapons are actually weapons, such as hoes, shovels, and axes. And the good thing about the hoe is that anybody can craft an iron hoe, and they have no durability, meaning you can smack a mob all day with that hoe, and the hoe will still be at 100% durability. So you found a swamp, you made your hoe, and you waited for nighttime, and now it's time to kill some mobs. You might notice right off the bat that mobs in HeroCraft are a lot harder than vanilla Minecraft. And this is because the farther away you get from spawn, the more health and damage the mobs will have. So I recommend you find a swamp that's fairly close to spawn, that way you don't get destroyed your first hour into the game. Or you can do what my buddy Prometheus and I are doing here, and party up. This way, there's two bodies, double the damage, double the health, and overall, much better mob killing experience. As I mentioned earlier, if you're in a party with another player, you can cast beneficial spells on them, but you can't hurt them or cast negative spells on them. In addition, any EXP gained by any member of the party, as long as they're in range, will be evenly split throughout the other members of the party, meaning that if Prometheus here kills a spider, I get half the XP, and he gets the other half. It makes leveling in low-level swamps that you could do by yourself actually take longer, but it means you can go out to higher-level swamps and gain more XP because you're fighting higher-level mobs. Now, while fighting mobs or doing anything in HeroCraft, you're bound to take damage. And unlike in vanilla Minecraft, where simply having a full food bar will restore your health, in HeroCraft you actually have to wait for combat to end and then eat the food. Different types of food restore a different percentage of your maximum health. For example, melons don't heal much, where a cooked steak will heal quite a bit. Now it's time to level your crafter class. You might have noticed when trying to craft certain items that it says, sorry, you don't know how to craft that item. And that's because you're not the proper crafter class yet. You're just a basic crafter at the moment. But don't worry, leveling crafter is extremely easy. Now there's two ways to level crafter, farming and mining. In my opinion, the best way to do it is mining. And this is because mining gives you stuff, such as iron, redstone, and diamonds, and in-game currency known as souls. When you're first starting off, you'll only be able to use a stone or an iron pickaxe. So get down and get some iron as fast as you can and make an iron pick. 
Once you've gotten your iron pick, you're going to want to go down to level 10 and do what's called strip mining. And for those of you that don't know, strip mining is the act of digging a 2x1 tunnel straight ahead just for the attempt of finding stuff. It'll yield a good amount of resources, and this is good for leveling because that's how you actually level up crafter classes. Mining minerals is how you gain XP for a crafter. The rarity of the mineral determines how much XP you're going to get for it. For example, coal is fairly abundant, so you're only going to get around 2 XP per coal block, whereas an emerald is much more uncommon, meaning you're going to get a whopping 80 XP per emerald. And the best thing about leveling crafter classes is, unlike combat classes, it does not matter how far from spawn you go. If you find a diamond right outside of spawn, you're going to get 50 XP. If you find a diamond 300 blocks from spawn, you're still going to get 50 XP. Watch out! If you ever run into somebody that looks like this with a bunch of really good stuff in a very tight cluster, that's just lag. It's a no-cheat plugin designed to stop X-rayers from finding minerals. You didn't actually run into the mother load. But let's say money's not exactly what you enjoy doing on your Sunday evenings. Instead, if you want a level crafter, you can actually go and farm. Now farming is the act of going out and breaking crops, such as wheat, pumpkins, melons, and that kind of stuff to gain XP. It's not nearly as lucrative as mining, as you're not going to get as many minerals or souls, but you'll still get good XP. So you've done some mining, and you've done some mob killing, and now you're sitting at level 20 lost soul on level 20 crafter. What do you do now? But once you hit 20 on either of the two classes, you can spec into what's called an advanced class. And this is where the real hero craft begins. While you are out mining and killing mobs, most likely you're going to run into some items called souls. And I really hope you hold on to these, because these are currency. And you're going to need some currency if you're going to do anything later on in the game. To spec into an advanced class out of Lost Soul and Crafter, you're going to need 400 souls. So keep these in a safe, secure spot, preferably in a hidden chest or a locked LWC chest if you're a donator, and bring these to the hero landing to the exchange whenever you have the chance. Now while you're collecting souls and XP, you probably also found a crap ton of these relic things, and I really hope you didn't throw these away either. Relics are used to make codexes, and codexes are used to get a free class change. So if you want to be an alchemist and you have a codex of alchemy, you can instantly become an alchemist completely for free. But that's a lot easier said than done. Finding these relics is actually fairly difficult because there's an extremely large amount of classes in the game. To make a codex, simply find relic 1 through 5 of any class that you want, put them in a crafting table, and bam, you have a codex. But let's say you want to be a dragoon, but you only have relics 1 through 3 of dragoon. Keep an eye on the light green chat, this is the trade chat. You might be able to find someone selling relics 4 and 5 of dragoon. There's an extremely high supply and demand of these relics, so oftentimes trading relics is the best way to go. You can probably get them a lot cheaper than it would cost just to spec to the class manually. So you slaughtered your way through a horde of mobs to hit level 20 lost soul, and you mined a bunch of tunnels to hit level 20 crafter, you made a bunch of souls and you were able to spec into paladin, and you got lucky enough to find a codex, and now you're an engineer. You've made a great start, but you've only scratched the surface of HeroCraft. There's still towns to join, conquest points to capture, and you still have to level up these two classes. So just keep doing what you're doing. Check out the township section of the forums to join up with a community of like-minded players, or start your own town if you think you have the leadership skills and the funds for it, or just be a roaming assassin and do whatever you want. All in all though, you've made a great start, and there's still a lot of depth and complexity for you to explore. So on behalf of all the heralds, guides, mods, admins, and everybody else on the server, let us officially welcome you to the multiverse. Still have more questions? If you see someone in the game with a title of guide, ask them questions. It's their job to help you out.